Good morning, YouTube. Stephanie Denman here from the Denman Homestead. It's been a minute since we've put out a video. Um, life has been so crazy here lately. Um, it's early morning. No one's even up yet. It's just me and my coffee. Uh, sun's kind of coming up. And I wanted to fill you in on some stuff going on with the chickens. Um, so, our chickens have been molting, which means, let me just set my coffee somewhere, hold on, put my coffee down on my seat so I can come out here to the chicken coop. So our chickens um, are going through molting, which is a natural process that chickens go through in the fall months. They, if you have chickens, or if this is your first time keeping chickens, and you notice anywhere between like August and sometimes as late as November, the coop or their area, their run will be full of feathers. Like, there's just feathers everywhere, and you almost think that like something got in there and got one, but, um, here comes Luna. Say hi, Luna. Where are you at? There she is. You would think that something got in there and got a chicken, but what they do is they shed their feathers that they've had all year long, and they start to store up fat and nutrients for the winter time. And when they shed their old feathers, they start to put on new feathers. And this helps protect them from the cold, and it's just their natural body's response to getting ready for cooler weather. Sometimes this will happen early in the south if you get an earlier cold front that kind of comes in. Like for us, we have a heat warning today, an excessive heat warning, because the highs are going to be like 95, but the heat index is going to be in the hundreds. But we had a cool front come in two weeks ago, which dropped the temperatures at night into the low 60s. So this triggered an early molt for my chickens. Um, one thing to note when your chickens do molt is that they won't lay eggs. They, egg production will drastically uh, reduce. So, um, I haven't gotten eggs in a while. Like, sometimes it takes them months to pick back up with laying. Um, it just gets, it's just their body's time to acclimate. I'm coming. Let's go ahead and feed the chickens. They're hungry. Look, look at this. <laughs> 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 this rose bush back. You notice but there's like a lot of well there's not so much anymore but kind of over here where their water is there's like feathers all on the ground um, how are we doing with water in here by the way oh y'all need some water you get them some water today so uh yeah you'll just notice a bunch of feathers on the ground and then they'll stop laying as much. And that's normal. Uh, Bri Brianne, actually, I had a. It's kind of not super common for the fall, but one of my chickens went broody. She's still in there. One of my chickens went broody. I noticed um, maybe like two weeks ago. And because my chickens aren't laying any eggs, she was just sitting on fake eggs. I have some two fake eggs in different boxes so that they know where to go lay their eggs. Um, I was telling Bree and Jamie that one of my hens went broody and Bree said that she had some silky eggs that she wasn't eating. She doesn't like to eat the silky eggs. I think that's funny. 
Um, and they were just sitting on her counter and I could take the eggs and put them underneath my broody mama if I wanted to try and hatch some silkies. So that's what I did and I'll show you. I'll show you her right now. Hello. Hi. Are you sitting on eggs? <laughs> These two are empty. There's no one in those. But you, are you sitting on eggs? She's got nine eggs under her right now that she's been sitting on. And she's all puffed up. Sometimes she won't even, like I just fed all the chickens and sometimes she won't even come down to eat. She just wants to sit on her eggs. I was really grateful that, um, you, you're going to peck me? Can I, sometimes she'll peck me, but, because they get kind of angry whenever you try to look when they're brooding. So you can see her eggs under there. You're a good mama. You're a good mama. Yeah. You can tell me about it. So she uh, she's sitting on about nine eggs, and the, they should hatch in about oh. I gave them to her about four days ago, so they should hatch two and a half weeks. So it's actually a pretty perfect time to have baby chicks because. October here in Houston can, in the Houston area anyway, can be like still 90 degrees outside during the day, which would mean, and cooler in the nights, that the babies don't necessarily need a heat lamp or a heat source when true winter kicks in. So this is actually a really perfect time for her to hatch her own babies, which when a, when a mom raises babies, you don't need to have a heat lamp anyway, but I probably would if it was in the dead of winter and she hatched babies just to give them some extra warmth but I think we're gonna be good and we're gonna be safe with that and I already have some chick starter in the barn ready for her to have her babies so now we're on baby watch I'm really excited about that because they're silky babies silky babies all right well I need to get the chickens some water and fill that up, do my morning chores, and I, you guys don't hop off yet, because I wanna show you in the barn everything that I've done. Um, if you joined my live the other day, you already kind of got a sneak peek of stuff going on that I've completed, but I've added even more stuff. I wanna show you the backsplash that I've done. Um, so yeah, if you'll hang on for one minute while I get the water going for the chickens, give you a little bit of a tour of the barn where we where we're at and I've already started working in there making soap so it's pretty cool. I just spotted Kim letting all of her animals out. You can see her all the way over there. She's like the Noah's Ark over there. <laughs> she looks so pretty this morning with her little flowy dress. I don't know if you guys can see. I wish I could zoom in more. She's talking to Molly, asking Molly, like, why aren't you going? Aww. Can you guys see that? I hope you can see it. Giving Molly some love this morning. That's sweet. Okay. It was getting warm out there already this morning. Um, all right, we're in the barn. I'm in Buddy's office space, which has become my staging area. Yeah. All my craft stuff, all of my store stuff, brought it in here and into Buddy's space. And then I have slowly started to kind of go through it all, organize it all, put it up. Um, so this is my space. And as you can see, there's stuff everywhere, like everywhere already. I've already ran out of space. And I'll give you a little bit of a and like an up, up and close personal tour. So starting off from the door to that connects Buddy's office and mine, um, I did these hanging shelves. I might have shown you guys this already, I'm not sure. Um, I've already got some soaps that I've started to make that are over here curing. These are some goat's milk soap and some molds. Um, this is tea tree, tea tree oil and eucalyptus goat's milk soap. I've got some vanilla goat's milk soap that I have over here in some molds. Um, and then I've got some of my candles and just 
wax melts and bath salts and more soap and our chapsticks and beard balms and beard oil. Um, and then I've just installed this yesterday. It's an additional storage. Uh, it's a cute little rack. I might actually put more of these up here. Um, I had to bring in, I didn't really want to bring this in here, but I ended up doing it anyway because I needed the storage temporarily for all of my empty containers until I can find a proper way to store those. And then over here, where I built this little built-in for the water heater, I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but I enclosed our water heater uh, in this little built-in bookshelf. And I decided to store my scents that I use for um, soap making and candle making and things. So I've got my scents over here. Um, there's the bathroom. And then uh, over here, the little kitchen, Got the fridge, and the microwave, and a little Keurig for coffee. Um, try, I'm trying to do all the space saving things, so uh, I've got all of that as you can see. Now what I really wanted to show you guys was the, don't laugh at my cookbook, it was a, it was a gift guys. This is a gift, don't laugh at it, I love it. <laughs> And I actually use it. Uh, I have all my recipe cards in here that I, um, my frequently used stuff that I do. Don't laugh at that book. What's wrong with that book? <laughs> Jamie loves that book. So here's some of my open shelving. I'm still filling it in um, with some of the things I love. My grandmother painted this uh, painting. I think it looks beautiful up there. So we've got a bunch of that. Um, all the stuff that I use a lot, kind of put them on the bottom shelf, wine included. Got our awesome sink that we installed. Um, but the backsplash. The backsplash, I was having a really hard time figuring out what I wanted to do. Because when I was at Home Depot, standing in the tile aisle, I was looking around, I was doing the math, and it was really expensive to get tile that I liked. Um, I think the tile alone was going to be like 300 bucks just for the space and then plus the grout and then the backing and um, I didn't have a tile saw so I was going to have to figure out how I was going to do a wet saw or like a diamond blade. It was all very overwhelming and I did not want to buy one more thing, <laughs> one more temporary tool that I wasn't going to be using you know, like, I didn't want to buy a wet saw or rent one when... Anyway, long story short, there's many options for backsplash. Peel and stick being one of them where you peel the back off and stick it up. This is not peel and stick, and it's not tile. It's actually, um, it's like a PVC material, almost, like a, like a vinyl material. Um, but it's backsplash, it's a backsplash kit, and it's also a, like a tile kit for your ceiling and it comes in these long sheets they're like 18 by 24 um, and you can cut them with a utility knife to like cut out the little squares for your outlets and things and then it comes with this adhesive that you it almost looks like a caulk like you need a caulk gun for it but it's an adhesive and then it the kit comes with the trim pieces so there's like this finishing trim on the top and on the sides you can finish it out to make it look really nice. What it did not come with was trim for the bottom where the bottom met the um, countertop. So I'll show you what I did. Because their suggestion was to use like white caulk just to make a bead of caulk. But my countertops were cut at a way that there was like more of an angle and it just didn't look right. It was like you could see the caulk and I didn't like it. So I found the smallest quarter round that they sold. The smallest quarter round. And I just tacked it down at the bottom and created a nice border. And it did not take up very much counter space. And it makes it look really clean. I did do white caulk around these edges. And I did do the white caulk where the two pieces met together. Like this is two pieces to one. So I put a little bit of a white caulk in here just to kind of blend the seam. 
If you look really close, you can see the seam, but I mean, you really have to look right up on it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I did the backsplash. It was pretty inexpensive. Um, I want to say the whole project total was maybe around 300 bucks. So just the cost of the tile alone that I wanted, I got the whole entire thing done. I'm really happy about that. So wanted to give you that quick update. And then back here is kind of like where my desk area is. And I've not completely worked that out um, on how that's going to work. You want to say hi? Hello. Yep. And then we've got this futon back here that's also a temporary placement. Um, Kim needed to get rid of it for Levi. It was in Levi's room. She needed to get rid of it, so I put it here. We're going to get rid of that, and we're going to get a pull-out couch. So anybody who wants to come and stay or needs a place to sleep can pull that out and sleep. Because this is like um, a chair made for ants. Like, I can't even lay down on it. <laughs> My feet hang off. So it's working out time being, though, for a place to sit. And, yeah, so this is kind of a more up-close and personal view. And that little nook that I made that I said I wanted to put my crock pots in. Yeah, I've got all my crock pots in there. There's six of them. In, there's six of them back there. So there's three down here and there's three up here. So all my crock pots are in there. And yeah, I'm utilizing every little nook and cranny that I can to try to make it all fit. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to wrap up this one. A little bit of chickens. Baby's coming soon. And I've been in here every single day from sunup to sundown, either working on stuff or making stuff, which has been really, really exciting for me. I truly enjoy starting to do that again. But I hope you guys have an excellent weekend. Go Texans, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye. Right. On the Denman homestead Where the sun sets golden in the west we live in harmony with nature, doing what we love best. From the garden to the kitchen, and the bees inside their hive. On the Denman homestead, come along and plant, nourish, thrive.